Common sense would be revolted if we engaged upon this process for petty reasons. Congress has a lot to do, appropriations, tax reform, health insurance, campaign finance reform. Housing, environmental protection, energy sufficiency, mass transportation. Pettiness cannot be allowed to stand in the face of such overwhelming problems. So today we are not being petty. We are trying to be big, because the task we have before us is a big one. This morning, in a discussion of the evidence, we were told that the evidence which purports to support the allegations of misuse of the CIA by the president is thin. We're told that that evidence is insufficient. What that recital of the evidence this morning did not. Include is what the president did know on June the 23rd, 1972. The president did know that it was Republican money, that it was money from the committee for the re-election of the president. Which was found in the possession of one of the burglars arrested on June the 17th. What the president did know on the 23rd of June was the prior activities of E. Howard Hunt, which included his participation in the break-in of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist. which included Howard Hunt's participation in the Dita Beard ITT affair. Which included Howard Hunt's fabrication of cables designed to discredit the Kennedy administration. We were further cautioned today that perhaps these proceedings ought to be delayed because Certainly there would be new evidence forthcoming from the President of the United States. There has not even been an obfuscated indication that this
committee would receive any additional materials from the president. The committee subpoena is outstanding. And if the president wants to supply that material, the committee sits here. The fact is that on yesterday, the American people waited with great anxiety for eight hours. Not knowing whether their president would obey an order of the Supreme Court of the United States. At this point, I would like to juxtapose a few of the impeachment. Criteria with some of the actions the president has engaged in. Impeachment criteria. James Madison, from the Virginia Ratification Convention. If the president be connected in any suspicious manner with any person and there be grounds to believe that he will shelter him, he may be impeached. We have heard time and time again that the evidence reflects the payment to defendant's money. The president had knowledge that these funds were being paid. And these were funds collected for the 1972 presidential campaign. We know that the president met with MR. Henry Peterson 27 times to discuss matters related to Watergate. And immediately thereafter met with the very persons who were implicated in the information Mr. Peterson was receiving. The words are. If the president is connected in any suspicious manner with any person. And there be grounds to believe that he will shelter that person, he may be impeached. Justice story, impeachment is attended is intended for occasional and extraordinary cases where a superior power acting for the whole people is put into
operation to protect their rights and rescue their liberties from violations. We know about the Houston plan. We know about the break-in of the psychiatrist's office. We know that there was absolute complete direction on September 3rd when The president indicated that a surreptitious entry had been made in DR. Fielding's office after having met with Mr. Ehrlichman and Mr. Young. Protect their rights. Rescue their liberties from violation. The Carolina Ratification Convention Impeachment Criteria Those are impeachable who behave amiss or betray their public trust for beginning shortly after the Watergate break-in and continuing to the present time. The president has engaged in a series of public statements and actions designed to thwart the lawful investigation by government prosecutors. Moreover, the president has made public announcements and assertions bearing on the Watergate case. Which the evidence will show he knew to be false. These assertions, False assertions, impeachable. Those who misbehave. Those who behave amiss or betray the public trust. James Madison again at the Constitutional Convention. A president is impeachable if he attempts to subvert the Constitution. The Constitution charges the President with the task of taking care that the laws be faithfully executed. And yet the President has counseled his aides to commit perjury. Willfully disregard the secrecy of grand jury proceedings, conceal surreptitious entry, attempt to compromise a federal judge.
while publicly displaying his cooperation with the processes of criminal justice. A president is impeachable if he attempts to subvert the Constitution. If the impeachment provision in the Constitution of the United States will not reach the offenses charged here. then perhaps that 18th century constitution should be abandoned to a 20th century paper shredder. Has the president committed offenses, and planned, and directed? and acquiesced in a course of conduct which the Constitution will not tolerate? That's the question. We know that. We know the question. We should now forthwith proceed to answer the question. It is reason, and not passion, which must guide our deliberations, guide our debate, and guide our decision. I yield back the balance of my time, Mr. Chairman. One Federalist, no. Sixty five. Two Federalist, no. Sixty five. Three Federalist, no. Sixty five. Four Commentaries on the Constitution of the United States Barbara Jordan Democratic National Convention Keynote Address Delivered July 12, 1976, New York, New York. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for a very warm reception. It was 144 years ago that members of the Democratic Party first met in convention to select a presidential candidate.
Since that time, Democrats have continued to convene once every four. years and draft a party platform and nominate a presidential candidate. And our meeting this week is a continuation of that tradition. But there is something different about tonight. There is something special about tonight. What is different? What is special? I, Barbara Jordan, am a keynote speaker. when a lot of years passed since 1832, and during that time it would have been most. Unusual for any national political party to ask a Barbara Jordan to deliver a keynote address. But tonight, here I am. And I feel I feel that notwithstanding the past that my presence. Here is one additional bit of evidence that the American dream need not forever be deferred. Now now that I have this grand distinction, what in the world am I supposed to say? I could easily spend this time praising the accomplishments of this. party and attacking the Republicans but I don't choose to do that. I could list the many problems which Americans have. I could list the problems which cause people to feel cynical. Angry, frustrated, problems which include lack of integrity in government. The feeling that the individual no longer counts, the reality of material and spiritual poverty. The feeling that the grand American experiment is failing or has failed. I could recite these problems, and then I could sit down and offer no solutions. but I don't choose to do that either. The citizens of America expect. More.
they deserve and they want more than a recital of problems. We are a people in a quandary about the present. We are a people in search of our future. We are a people in search of a national community. We are a people trying not only to solve the problems of the present, unemployment. Inflation, but we are attempting on a larger scale to fulfill the promise of America. We are attempting to fulfill our national purpose, to create and sustain a society in which all of us are equal. Throughout throughout our history, when people have looked for new ways to solve their problems. And to uphold the principles of this nation, many times they have turned to political parties. They have often turned to the Democratic Party. What is it? What is it about the Democratic? party that makes it the instrument the people use when they search for ways to shape their future? Well I believe the answer to that question lies in our concept of governing. Our concept of governing is derived from our view of people. It is a concept deeply rooted in a set of beliefs firmly etched in the national conscience of all of us. Now what are these beliefs? First, we believe in equality for all and privileges for none. This is a belief this is a belief that each American regardless of background, has equal standing in the public forum all of us. Because because we believe this idea so firmly. We are an inclusive rather than an exclusive party. Let everybody come. 